Good evening and welcome to Sunday Night Satsang with John and Michelle. Hi everyone. Hello everyone. Sunday evening and it's Satsang time. Time to center ourselves, refresh ourselves, rejuvenate our connection to spirit before we start the new week. I trust you've had a good weekend and that you are in a more relaxed state now and ready to face the new week. Mm, absolutely. And tonight we have a special, special, beautiful Bright light in the sky called the full moon. <laughs> it really, really is full, full, full. Right yeah, mm. beautiful. Coming up over Such the mountains, so you can see it from here. Beautiful. Mm. So Michelle will talk a little bit about that, and right. then we'll move into tonight's uh, satsang, where we're going to be looking at why is it so hard to let go? Why is it so hard to surrender to life in this moment? Why is it so hard to let go of past? So we're going to be looking at that tonight. So thank you for joining us, and uh, if you would like to let us know where you're watching from, let us know your, your hello Paula. Hello. We were wondering if anyone was out there. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Paula. <laughs> yeah, we're not There's nothing showing up on our screen. Yeah, so we don't know if we're talking so, to a blank screen or not. That's lovely. Thank you, Paula, for yeah. letting us know that you're there. Let us know where hello, you Claire. are from. Hello, Claire. <laughs> And uh, from Zimbabwe and Celia. Cecilia. Hi, Cecilia. And thank you for the hearts. We love getting the hearts. <laughs> when we get the hearts, we know that we're not they just talking to a blank screen. screen. Yeah, uh -huh. it's beautiful. <laughs> yes, thank you for that. And if you find what we have to share helpful um, or of value, please press the like and the share button. And if you hadn't haven't yet subscribed to our channel, please press the subscribe button as well. Is there a subscriber on Facebook? There mm. isn't. No, there isn't. Just a like and share. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's get getting more into the picture there. Okay. Okay. So welcome, yeah. Hello, Merlin from PE. Hi, Merlin. Hi. Nice to have you all with us. Yeah. We we've got such a windy evening again mm. here tonight. Um, and when we get the wind here in Cape Town, Joburg usually gets the rain, and I know they does, had yeah. a bit of a drought. So just let us know if there's any rain in Johannesburg, because I know that you are needing rain in that part of the world. And when we get the wind, the southeast are blowing this like this. It normally indicates that rain is in the north of the country. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Hello, Diane. Hi, Hi Yvette. Hello, Yvette Hi. from Bali. What's it like in Bali? What's your weather like in Bali? Sharon. Hello, Sharon. Beautiful. Yeah, give us some comments below. Thank you so much for yeah. joining us. Thank you. Thank you for right. joining. So Thank let's start this evening, as we always do, by uh, just centering ourselves, becoming more aware of life as it is in this moment, rather than life as it occurs inside our mind, disconnected from presence. Let's come into the body, the physical body. And what we normally do, you don't have to do this, uh, we, we've lit a candle, we have a lovely candle which we always light uh, in front of us because the flame is something quite sacred in that the flame is a, is a, is a plasma and it, it, it has a life of its own and it's, it's indicating the flow of life and presence. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a focus and a sacred, it's got a sacred... For me, it's got a sacred energy to it. Yeah. And with a candle, you can try doing open eye meditation, just gazing at the at the flame mm. of the candle. That's a very good way of centering the mind. But closing the eyes is also good because it disconnects you from the outside world and allows you to go into the body, in your awareness. So you might like to gently shut your eyes and just connect with life as it manifests in this moment in your body. You are life, and life is presence. So let's just bring our awareness from the mind, from time, from yesterday, from tomorrow. Let's just withdraw our mind from all other places, all other times, and become more centered in the sacred essence of life in this moment, which we call presence. The divine is omnipresent. We have the ability to disconnect from the divine and go into yesterday and tomorrow, but the divine is always waiting here in the present moment for us to return. 
So let's just use this opportunity right now to reconnect with the sacred essence of being here, now, in this place. And let's just take a deep breath in, very deep breath in. As we draw the air in, let's be grateful for this breath that we're taking right now. And as we breathe out, let us breathe out all the stale energy from our body. Let's release it, let it go. Let's breathe in fresh air. You might like to see the air as blue as you breathe it in. Fresh, beautiful blue air deep into your body. And as you breathe out, you might like to visualize it as a, as a brown energy, a stale energy leaving your body. Try that again. Breathe in the beautiful, fresh blue air into your body, right down to your toes. And then as you breathe out, just relax your shoulders and your neck muscles and surrender and let it go, let it go, let it go. Allow life to breathe you gently in and out now without having to do the process yourself. The surrender to life, the intelligence that is beating your heart right now, that is enabling you to listen Maybe digesting food in your stomach. It's definitely oxygenating every cell in your body through the transportation of the oxygen from your lungs through all the arteries and capillaries to the every single cell in your body. This process, which we call life, is happening right now in this moment. And as we relax and we surrender, we activate the parasympathetic nervous system. And as we do that, we enable healing in the body. We enable life to flow more freely through our physical body, bringing healing, bringing life. And let's now use the faculty of listening to bring us more present. Just become aware of all the sounds you can hear right now. We can hear the southeaster blowing outside. What can you hear? Just become aware. Become aware that you are aware of the sounds. And the you that is aware transcends the physical identity that the world recognizes us through. For it's not your name that listens, it's not your gender that listens, it's not your age that listens. There's something deeper, more eternal, right now, here, in this moment, that is aware. It's the eternal you, the being. That is the awareness of listening. And this being requires nothing. It is complete and whole unto itself in this moment. And it's always at rest. So let's just connect our awareness directly with this present moment and with the peace that this present moment contains. might like to say the affirmation, the confirmation of truth. I am peace. I don't seek peace. I am peace. I am And as we start to recognize our true essence as peace, this creates a ripple in the field of energy around our bodies, bringing our body into balance, but also rippling out into the world around us, allowing this knowledge of who we are to flow into the world, 
transforming the world from turmoil, helping it come back to its balance point, which is peace. We have to be the change we want to see in the world. We would like to see peace in the world. Let's connect our awareness directly of it isn't this moment, here and now. Not as a future outcome, but as a present experience, here and now. I am peace. Feel that truth in your body, right now. And let's use the power of imagination, power of intention, power of visualization to see a beautiful golden light around the world at this time. Beautiful golden light. See it as a dancing, a live energy around the earth. And just intentionally infuse this golden light around the earth with joy. Joy dissipates the darkness instantly. There can be no darkness in the vibration of joy. So let's just intend this beautiful golden light of protection around the earth at this time to be dancing with the vibration and the frequency of joy. Feel it in your heart. Feel it in your body. Know it to be so. There is so much power in knowing it to be so. Not hoping, but knowing. We are powerful beyond measure, each one of us. And so as we use the power of our imagination and visualization, it is so. There is a golden light around the earth at this time dissipating the darkness, bringing peace to dissolve the turmoil. And let's see this as a vibration of frequency of beautiful joy. Now gently take a very deep breath in. Deep, deep breath in, right down to your solar plexus. And a long sigh out, beautiful soft sigh out. And keeping this peace in your awareness. When you're ready, you may gently open your eyes. To see how you feel in this moment. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? A bit more connected, a bit more real, a bit more alive. A bit more peaceful. A bit more peaceful. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, lovely, John. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. I'm sure that, I'm not sure. Thank you for taking that. I was scared to push that off. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Hello, Sue from Hogsback. How's Hogsback? And hello, Karuna and Linda. Linda. And all of you have joined during the intro. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for being here tonight. And I said if you... Just let us know where you're from. We like to know who we're talking to, and we love getting the hearts. And if you find what we have to share of any value, please, please press the share button, the like and the share button. It really does um, get help get it out there. Yeah. Hello, Lisa, Hello, Lisa from, from Italy. Italy. We've got Bali and Italy and yeah. UK. Christine's up on the All right. Okay. Hello, so, Christine. happy new full moon, everybody. Yeah, happy big new fat full moon. full moon outside our window. In Libra. Very big. No, it's in Aries. Aries? Yeah. Oh, well, I thought we were in Libra. No, the sun's in Libra. The sun's not here, it's asleep. <laughs> the sun's, sun's gone to sleep. The moon's out. And the moon's in Aries. Oh, I'm confused. It's opposite the sun. I'm confused. So it's a very big, um, it's it's quite a quite an intense full moon, as I said in my blog, my blog, whatever you want to call it, below. So if you haven't watched that, you can have that a watch, and that will show you a little bit more about this big full moon. But basically, we've got the full moon... Um, and so we've got the sun and Venus, the planet of love, on this side in Libra, which is the sign of the scales, peace, balance, harmony. That's what Libra wants. Libra wants cooperation and harmony and relationship. 
It's all about that. It's an air sign. It's about communication. And then on the other side, opposite that, you have the moon in Aries, in fiery, passionate, impulsive, sometimes impatient um, Aries. No, but I'm, I'm Aries and I'm calm and relaxed calm. and chilled. So you I mean, are, you, you can't paint calm. us all with the same brush. I said impulsive, impulsive. Bit passionate. Well, maybe a bit passionate, and a bit impulsive. Fiery. Yeah. A bit fiery at yeah. times. And go getterish. <laughs> go getterish. That's and me. Wants things to happen. So me and the moon are competitive usually. Yeah. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And you know, it can also be associated. Aries uh, can be associated with war as well. Um, and the opposite is peace. It doesn't have to be war, but it can be. So yeah. this this moon in Aries is also right next to Chiron, the wounded healer. And so, and those two are in a very wide square to Pluto. And Pluto is right now stationing to turn direct after six months. So what that really means is that there's quite a lot of intensity around, as many of you might have felt over the past few days. And maybe stuff's come up for the, uh, from sort of the depths, um, maybe old memories. I know we've been clearing and cleaning and packing boxes and things like that. So... Um, a lot of old old energies come up, old memories come up, and that can actually happen when something big sort of stands and turns either retrograde or direct, and then to amplify that, the full moon. So it's really a time, full moon's always a time to let go, which is why we chose that as a theme, and to return to really who we are, which is that beautiful, peaceful place, which John took us into. Um, which is very in keeping with this full moon. So we can get caught up in all the drama and the wars that we have around us um, and the wars that we have within us, or we can actually maintain our, our centre. Um, and so we just thought it would be a nice thing tonight to talk about letting go and how hard it is for some of us to actually let go, uh, whether it's relationships or objects or jobs, or careers, or homes, or whatever it is, why do we find it so hard? And, you know, how, how can we let go more easily? And what, what does it mean if we do let go? And I, I found a beautiful quote, um, just to give us an intro into the evening. It's by Deepak Chopra. And he says, in the process of letting go, you will lose many things from the past, but you will find yourself. And I, I know that to be true. That, that is the case because if we're dragging the past behind us we cannot be that which we are which is liberated and free so it's a lovely one the process of letting go you'll lose many things from the past but you will find yourself you'll find your, your true self which is un, unburdened by all the baggage that we cart around yeah, and the yeah. full moon is the time for letting go, for releasing. For releasing. It's a culmination yeah. point in the in the moon cycle. Yeah. And then the moon starts to wane. So it's a it's a it builds, builds, builds up to the full moon, and the full moon ignites and amplifies and shines a light. So it'll shine a light on those parts of us which we haven't managed to let go, which we're battling to let go. The parts of us which might feel not good enough, for example, because Chiron is the wounded healer, which is often that part of us that feels flawed and imperfect in some way. So this could shine a light on any of those things as well. It can also shine a light on um, relationship issues because of the Libra um, Aries axis. So let us know in the comments box if that resonates with you at all. Are you finding any issues relating to letting go of the past? Maybe past physical things, but past maybe past emotions, past resentments or angers or guilt. Uh, let us know in the comment section if that resonates with you at all, because this is a very powerful full moon that we're experiencing, and we are connected to the cosmos. Uh, and the cosmos is uh, an, another word for order. So there is a certain order in this releasing cycle that we're going through at the moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, it may manifest in different ways in different people's lives. And it also might, just because of the Pluto um, turning direction, um, it can actually, if anything was happening for you in April, could also be coming up for its final kind of release or for a really big release. So you can just revisit that if, if, if anything comes to mind. You know, what was going on there? 
how have you shifted? Because in its retrograde period, how have I shifted? How have I transformed? What have I transmuted? How have I grown in, this, in, the, in the last six months? Where am I now compared to where I was then? Because I think we tend to get quite impatient with ourselves. And we sometimes don't um, give ourselves credit for where we have come from and how we have grown and what we have managed to let go of. So it's just a little reflection there as well. Yeah, and the very purpose of this human experience, yeah, it is to have human experience, the emotions and the richness of this realm that we are in, mm. the realm of contrast. Mm. But the primary purpose of our human incarnation is actually to come back to love. And love is not something to be reached for. It's not something to be earned. It's not something anything anyone can give you. It is our true essence. Love is being. It is who we are. And the only thing that stops us realizing that, seeing it with real eyes, is the baggage that we carry. And the baggage consists of thoughts. All the thoughts that we hold on to that... that um, tie us into the matrix they block us from love and this period particularly today with this beautiful full moon we have the opportunity to surrender that to release it to let it go to release all that blocks us from love that's our primary purpose to come back to who and what we really are yeah, there's a lot of secondary purposes in life you know we can do a lot of other things in life but it's never to forget our primary purpose is to surrender, to give up all that blocks us from our true spiritual essence, which is the divine. I mean, that's who and what we really are. And to come back to that essence of peace, that sacredness, that stillness, that is our true essence. And today, you know, we, Michelle mentioned earlier that we were packing boxes mm. and uh, because we were moving from from where we, well, I've lived here for about 15 years now, and we're moving on to a farm in the garden route um, end of the month. So it's meant that we've had to go through a lot of cupboards today and, mm -hmm. and, and pack up. And I moved into this house where they, my, my previous partner lived in, you know, there was a lot of her stuff there and a lot of her family's stuff and a lot of my old stuff. And it's amazing, I was telling Michelle, I even found some old cassettes that I'd had from the 1970s with and my old music on. And they're still intact. Amazing. And it's a case of, of releasing that. And the subject tonight is really, why is it so hard to let go of the past? And it is hard. You see that old cassette, which you haven't thought of for, I mean, so many years. And you look at it, and you, I've got a rubbish bag and a packing box. And it's so hard to put it in the, in the, in the rubbish bag. Because, no, there's so much it's emotional mine. attachment to it. There's a sense of me invested in that, in that cassette tape from the, from the, from the seventies, which is, uh, is, is completely made up illusion in, in my mind because it's not me in any way at all. And I must say to my credit, I've thrown away many, many big black bags of stuff today. That's no, remarkable, actually. I've been yeah. very impressed. Just <laughs> John coming downstairs with very big black bags. I mean, full of stuff. And sort of each one that he brings down, I kind of go, okay, that's another load. Yeah. And it's going to be very interesting to see how, how energetically. Mm. I remember years ago, I mean, I've had a few kind of big sort of purges as well in my life. But a, a, a number of years ago, I had to clean out my um, storeroom, my little... Gemini had storeroom thing because it got flooded and there was nothing that I could salvage. So I had my the guy who used to help me in the garden and he, he helped me take stuff to the dump. And we spent the day basically just taking stuff to the dump. And the next day, I could not believe how different I felt energetically. And that wasn't even stuff in my house, but it was stuff that I was still attached to. It was all that stuff. That I've been carting around from move to move to move boxes of stuff from childhood and dolls and photographs and cards and letters and everything. And it was gone. And so on the one hand, there was that, that sense of, but I've lost something because that's part of me. And on the other hand, complete liberation as well. And they're, they're literally like right next to each other. There's, as, as, as it goes, there's the sense of, oh, and then there's and a the sense liberation. of complete liberation. It is. It is. And so why is it that why is it that it's so hard to let go? 
and I, I, I just see it as that it's the stuff that we identify ourselves with, as you said. Yeah. There's something in you that's identified with that person who had that, um, that tape, or the memory that that music invokes in you, or that particular sentimental object that reminds you of a certain place. And those things are, they're illusions because yeah. they're gone. But those are the things that actually regenerate those those memories, and then we get attached to them. Well, the process of acquisition comes at a very young age. You know, within yeah. a few months of being born, we get given something. You know, given a rattle or whatever. And as we as we go through the the the, the first year, we slowly gather a sense of identity of ourselves being connected to the world around us. And particularly as we go into our second year and our third year, we start to identify who we are with the stuff that that we would say is is ours. That rattle is mine. That doll is mine. That mm. that the train set is mine. Mm. That person over there is my mother. And then we even get attached to my name becomes mine. And so in the first part of our of our lives, particularly up to the age of seven, it's all about acquiring a greater sense of who we are from the world of form around us. So it's it's a very natural process. But then it comes to the point where what we have acquired actually becomes a prison for us. And we get imprisoned in the stuff around us. You know, we acquire the stuff because it gives us joy to acquire it. But once we've acquired it, we can't let go of it because it's a sense of me, but it actually weighs us down. And one of the greatest things we can do to liberate us is to really do a massive spring clean. And here in the southern hemisphere, we, we are in that time of the year, we in mm-hmm. spring. And it's a great time, particularly with the full moon, to do a clearing process, to go through your drawers, your, your clothes, your food cupboard, mm, and just okay. see what what isn't of any service to you anymore. Even if you haven't used it in the last year or so, give it away. There's someone who maybe could make better use of it um, than, than you can. Give it away. And give it away knowing that all your needs are always met. Because so often we give something, we think, well, I need it, uh, me particularly. You know, I've got the old, I've got about 10, I had about 10, Transformers for chargers for cell phones. Now those cell phones are long gone, but I've still got the charger thinking that one day I might need them. And luckily it was quite easy for me to release all of that and the, the cables and the wires. And I mean, there were hundreds of, of DVDs and, and stuff that all had to go. And, and it's really liberating to do that. And if you, abs- if, if it becomes easier, one of the tools of making it less hard is to know that all your needs are always met in the present moment. Or if you look back, your needs have always been met. I mean, I've gone through a, a few times in my life of absolute clearing, uh, liquidation, divorce, etc. And you walk away with nothing. And then suddenly the stuff all appears again. You get even more stuff. And it comes back so quickly. So there isn't, if you, if you, if you approach the clearing process with the knowledge that all your needs are always met in each and every moment. You don't have to hold on to yesterday because tomorrow your needs will be met. So don't you don't have to hold on to anything, in fact. Mm-hmm. And that's a very liberating life uh, to, to lead because as you start to develop that, that psychology, that belief pattern in you, you find it's far easier in the moment to release, to release, to release, mm-hmm. to let go. And then you become far lighter in the way that you tread on this earth. And also, if you know, if we're wanting something new in our lives and we've got um, everything's full, <laughs> so cupboards are full, just in terms of things, we're talking about things now, and cupboards are full and we've got so many clothes and we've got so many kitchen uh, um, things that we have never used and stuff that's stashed at the back of the cupboard that we haven't seen for 20 years. How's anything new going to actually come in? Because nature pours a vacuum. So you are, as soon as you clear, something new can actually fill that space. And it's the same, I think, with relationships, with, with friendships that maybe have, have moved on. Um, very definitely the thoughts and the, and the conditioning that we have, but we're going to um, look at that separately. But in terms of actual things, the more stuff that you've got, the less new stuff can actually come in. And so 
once you clear it out, you're leaving so much space, a literal energetic space and physical space that it changes everything because it changes our energy. Because, you know, we often say, and we always say, we are energetic. We feel energy, whether we, whether we know it or not, whether we're conscious of it or not, whether we see it or not. We are feeling energy. We feel the full moon. We feel the planetary movements. We don't know what they are. We don't have to call them anything. But we feel the energy. And so we feel energy when there's energy stuck in a specific mm. place that needs to move on. So that something else can move. And that that you're giving away, for example, is going to somebody else that might need it. And so it's creating an energy flow as opposed to an energy block. And if you look at illness, illness is usually an energy block. It comes from an energy block very often. Where if you look energetically, you'll see oh, there's, an, there's a block there. And once you clear the block, the illness will release. That's what mm. acupuncture is based on. And a lot of Chinese medicine, a lot of holistic medicine is based on that principle. It's clear the energy and you clear the illness. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's just, it's, it's really, really important to actually keep the flow of energy going. And so, and that sort of brings us to, you know, the, the, the conditioned patterns and thoughts that we have about ourselves and others. And the resentments that we hold, you know. Those ones that we've got like listed in a little book, like, yeah, like, forgiven everybody, but not that one, not that one, because that one hurt me, or that one is has done something inexcusable. And so those those are the really heavy things, because those things, tox they they poison us. Non forgiveness and non letting go of those things poison us energetically. They absolutely poison us. So as soon as we can see that, um, we, can, we can sort of see, we often talk about forgiveness, especially in our, in our course, in our journey. Um, when we can see that there is a perfect plan, and that, that life itself is perfect, then you can see that, yes, that person came into my life and left my life. Or that person came in and did that to me. Because in so, on some level, on a, on a higher level, that was supposed to happen which then helps us to let go of it. It's when we're stuck in it, we're stuck in it because we have identified ourselves with that. And we're getting something from being stuck in it. That's another thing. So we're getting, we're getting something from being stuck in that role getting of, it. let's just say, the victim. You know, I'm a victim because this person did this to me. And we get stuck in that identity. It's, that, that's baggage. That stuff that's keeping us stuck and keeping us from being the love and the peace that we actually are. Because the question you have to ask yourself is, do you want lightness in your life? And lightness is two forms. First of all, there's the light as in a candle, the lightness, and there's also the feeling of being light. Do you want that? Now, Michelle mentioned earlier about clearing the space, because when you clear the space, there's room for new stuff to flow through into that space. In truth, we are the space. Yeah. We're not the thingness. We are the space. It's our true identity. Love is space. That's what love is. It's not a form. It's the formless. We are the formless. And by holding on to stuff, we keep our stuff trapped in gravity. We are not affected by gravity. Who we really are cannot have the graveness. But the stuff that we hold on to, including the thoughts and the emotions, that weighs us down. So the very act of releasing and surrendering allows us to feel more light in our, in our life. Particularly at the moment, there's a lot of people who seem to be or are experiencing anniversaries of, of loved ones or there's a, there's a sense that of having to let go of the past. And in, in clearing away today, there were three people who have passed on in my life whose stuff I have with me. And in clearing away, there's a, there was a friend I had in, in Johannesburg, a very, he was like a soul brother of mine. And I, I came across some of his work and I was just releasing it. And, and the words came to me and I could hear him saying to me, these are, are of no use to me anymore. Let them go. And, you know, we, we, we hold on to them because we think we're honoring 
the person who, who maybe gave them to us or who we got them from after they passed. We're not honoring them any, in any way at all. All we're doing is holding on to a thought pattern. Yeah. They don't need them, and you possibly don't, don't need them. them. You don't need that vase from eight, on Mabel who that died you hate, 10 years ago, or that piece of, <laughs> that you got from my mother. You're not honoring the, 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 no. the so-called, the, those who've transitioned, those who've passed on, by holding on to their stuff. Not at all. What they want for you, if you were to ask them, they want lightness. They want you to be free. And by you holding on to those old physical things, all those thought patterns and those emotions, you are tying yourself down. You're making yourself heavy. And what they want for you is joy and lightness. And at the same time, as you release their physical objects, which maybe you inherited, you actually release them. You release their energy. And you enable them to be even lighter and freer. So no, you're not doing any person who's transitioned any good by holding on to the stuff because you think you ought to. Not at all. I had a, I had a, a reading um, about a year after my mom passed with this psychic lady. And um, she just about channeled my mother for an hour. It was phenomenal. And she, in, the, in the one part of the session, she said, the crochet blanket that you've got that takes up your whole top shelf of your cupboard your mother's saying, let it go. You don't need it. She doesn't, she doesn't care. <laughs> it's, like, it's okay to let it go. And, you know, we don't believe that. We yeah. actually believe that we have to keep the stuff yeah. because of out of some kind of loyalty or yeah. something. Um, so it's really just to see, as John said, that we're, all they want on the other side is for us to actually be free and happy and joyful. And I think Linda said that it's very difficult if you care for someone to let them go. But you've got to ask yourself how um, how much you are, what you're gaining by holding on, Linda, you know. And because, but because, and you know, what would it be like to let go? Because holding on to something that is that needs to be let go of, what's it doing to you? How's it, it how's it serving how's you? How's it serving you? Yeah. Because it generally is serving you in some way, otherwise you would let mm. go. But there'll yeah. be some kind of a way that there's some yeah. there's some there's something that we're gaining from and, that. And the question the question also to be looked at there is who is holding on? Who is holding on? Who is holding on? You know, what part of you needs that? What part of you yeah. needs that thing or that emotion or that thought? It's not you, it's not the real you. The real essence is emptiness, that's who you are. But there's a part of you which we become so attached to, which holds us to the earth and, and, and almost forces us to come back lifetime after lifetime after lifetime because we've got that connection with heaviness. And so this time that we're going through now is not a minor time. It's a major time of clearing, major, letting go and trusting and allowing life to lead you into the new. You know, they say it's harder for, well, I'm saying, it's, I mean, there are many different ways of looking at this. It's harder for a camel, what was it, to pass through the eye of the needle than a rich man to get into heaven. And and that was a mistranslation mm. because the camel is supposed to be a rope. It's hard to hard, harder to thread a rope through the eye of the needle, apparently. But the, the point is that you can take nothing into heaven with you. <laughs> nothing. So let's say heaven is a place of bliss, a place of peace and the place of love. You can take nothing with you there. So anything that we're holding on to is blocking us from that heaven, from that beautiful, beautiful place. Why are you punishing yourself to hold on to the past when your destiny is heaven? Why? Why are you doing that to yourself? And the, 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 the answer is categorically because you do not love yourself. Yeah. And what is love? but to live in a surrendered way, a non-attached way, a joyful way, an enlightened way. That's what love is. And so the ego, the personality, the mind, it doesn't want you to let go because it's going to have to die. But in its death is your liberation. And so now is the time to step out of those old mind patterns that have so tied us to the past. And step into the newness that's birthing within the world and within us. 
It's a, it's a, it's a new world of liberation, of freedom, of joy, and of love. That's our destiny. And Gina says, you know, with with her mom there, you know, holding on to physical things to still feel connected. Yeah, it's not true mm -hmm. because you are and always will be connected. Not through physical. And not through the physical. Mm -mm. That that beingness that was your mum, or whoever's yeah. lost anybody, has never left. Yeah. I mean, John got a a message today from his friend that passed. That was a, that was a connection. It was a it was a connection because they connected and will mm. always be connected. Mm. And so it's not through things. The th things will remind you of mm. something. Mm. You know, I spoke to somebody the other day that I hadn't spoken to for a long time, and she said that she'd been through photographs and she was feeling terribly sad. And that's, you know, photographs can evoke beautiful memories, and they can also take you back into the past and really, really put you into a state of, of, of depression and sadness. And sometimes that's okay to do, but if you're living there, you're not free. Mm -hmm. If you're living there, you're living in the past. And the past is an illusion. It's gone. Hmm. So the same as living, trying to live in the future. I mean, that's an illusion. Yeah. So to just see it, to say, you know, it, it, anniversaries, these big anniversaries that come around once a year, and people get freaked out because there's an anniversary coming, and how am I going to deal with the anniversary? It's just the mind. It's the mind saying it's the anniversary again. It doesn't have to be that. It can be, yes, it's the anniversary of, that person's passing, and I celebrate that person. I celebrate the memory of that person. It doesn't have to be that yeah. very dark, very difficult experience. It doesn't have to be. We make it that. We we decide yeah. if we're going to hold on to things and if, if they're going to really disturb us or not. Yeah. And the thing is, we, when we hold on to things that remind us of them, or thoughts that remind <coughs> us of them, or photographs that remind them of, of them. It's not them that they're reminding us of. What we are holding on to is a thought pattern of yeah. what they were. Yeah. They're not that now, not at all. Rather connect to what they are now, not what they were. Because what they were is gone. But what they are now is much lighter, much freer. If, if it is someone from who, who's transitioned, who's passed over. Focus on what they are now. Celebrate that. Hold on to what they are now, which is lightness and joy and love. Yeah. Don't hold on to the, the thought pattern in your mind as what they were. They're not what they were. They're not that they were at, at all. They are what they are. The I am that I am is always here, always present. And that I amness is our true essence, our true being. The mind only knows form. So the mind holds on to form, but it was never the form that you loved. It was the formless within them that we love. It's the formless that animates the body, that is alive. That's what we love. You know, when, when, when the life leaves the form, the formless, when, if you've ever witnessed someone passing, instantly that formless becomes dead. It becomes heavy. It becomes nothing compared to what it was when the form, when the formless inhabits it. So don't, your mind will only focus on form, but it was never the form that you loved. It was the formless that animated that form that you loved. And that formless is freer, more joyful, more vibrant when you connect with it directly in your heart in this moment. We are distracted and pulled down in gravity in heavy ways through remembering the form. It is the formless that is free, that needs to be celebrated in this moment. And it's joy. It's yeah. joyful. If, if, if someone who's passed over came back to you, they wouldn't say, as, as, as you found out, they wouldn't say, hold on to my, to my <laughs> blanket. My, I, I need you to hold on to my crocheted blanket. They would say, liberate yourself. Get rid of it. Yeah. That was my mother's words. Get rid yeah. of that thing. <laughs> That's what they would say yeah. to you. So the question you have to ask yourself yeah. is, is, do you want to live a joyful, free life, or do you want to be emburdened, is there such a word, burdened mm -hmm. by the past that you choose to carry around with you? That's not even real. Choice. That's not even real. Yeah. It's not even choice. real. Rather connect directly with presence. There is joy in presence. 
everyone that you ever love, loved or love, is presence here in, in this moment. That's how you directly connect to them. Not in the thought in the mind, but here in the awareness of this present moment. That's the beauty of life. Life is only ever now. And you know, it, it, just a question to ask is, what would I be, how would I be, if I actually had to let go of this, whatever this is? Because if we had to put a hot coal into your hand, how long would you hold it for? Probably not very long, because it would be burning a hole yeah. through your hand. Mm. You would drop it, because you would know that it's physically burning me. And that is what not letting go is doing. It's burning you. That's what it's doing. So it's when you see that, as John said, that it's because you don't love yourself. Because if you loved yourself, you'd, you'd drop the hot coal. you quite like your hand, right? So you would drop that. You would mm. let it go. You would just say, no, this is not serving me. I'm letting it go. I'm letting it pass. Things come and things go. And that is what life is. Life is not constant. It's, it's changing. It's always going to change. It's just a flow of energy. To think that things are going to stay the same is insane. Because they don't and have, haven't ever. Mm. So to actually just see that, yes, you do miss people. Yes, you do grieve people when they leave. They act, you absolutely do. You need, to, you need to go through that process of grief, however long that is. But once you're through it, then you need to move on. Because it's almost like you're getting stuck in that. Because mm. it gives us a sense of identity. Yeah. It gives us, a, I'm stuck in an identity linked to that person or yeah. linked to those things. And you have to ask yourself that question. Do I want liberation? Do I want liberation yeah, for want me to. and for everyone around me? Do I really want liberation? Do I want joy? Do I want peace? Do I want love? Or am then, I scared of the? Or am I scared of liberation? Am I scared? Do I deserve it? Do I deserve liberation? Yeah, that's the other thing. We punish ourselves mm. by 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 holding on to things that make us feel heavy. We're punishing ourselves through that. We don't feel that we are worthy of light and joy and peace, but. Let me break it to you gently. You are worthy of freedom, of life and joy. And everyone who loves you wants that for you. Because you want it for those that you love. And, you know, we, we do know that when, you know, grieving is a natural human process. But we do know from, from channeled experiences with people who've passed over that our grieving is actually holding them back. It does do that. I'm not saying don't grieve. It's a very necessary process to go through. But just to know that we're not doing them any good by by grieving stay past there. a certain state. Don't stay there. Feel the pain. As it washes through you, feel it fully in that moment. But let it go. It doesn't take more than 15 seconds to heal from a wave of grief. That's all. Any longer than that, we are generating it with thoughts in our mind to keep us stuck in that place. Because we don't, we don't feel worthy of freedom and lightness. So it is a liberation process that we're going through to, to free ourselves, as, as we've been doing today, from cupboards. And <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable. Tapes, cassette tapes. The cassette tapes and <laughs> CDs and DVDs and toys. all sorts of toys. Yeah, it's amazing. And it's liberating to free ourselves from old emotional patterns as well. Don't hold on to, yes, I used to be depressed, but let it go. I used to be angry. Let it go. I used to be very guilty. Let it go. It doesn't Ooh. serve you in this moment. Oh, I'm feeling this. I'm feeling sadness. Feel it and then let it go. Yeah. So let it seconds. feel you. Feel it. Feel it. Feel yeah. the anger. Let it go. Feel the sadness. Feel the anxiety. Feel it all. Yeah. But don't let it st stay there. Because that it's staying there is you're holding on to that hot coal and it's burning a hole through you. Yeah. So to let, let it pass. Don't Don't repress it. So you're not trying to bury the thing. You're saying, yeah, I feel this. I feel, I'm feeling, oh, I'm feeling all these emotions today. It's full moon. Okay, yes. fine. Let me feel them and let them pass by. Breathe out. Exhale. As you feel a wave of emotion. I was feeling my own today. I was going through my own thing. And feeling and just, just breathing out and going, okay, I'm letting go. Breathing out in this moment. Letting go of whatever this is, whatever this conditioned belief is, whatever this pattern is, whatever this hurt is, whatever this sadness is. I'm safe enough to let go of it. And I love myself enough 
to let go of it. Let the emotions wash through you. They're not meant to be dammed up. If you damn emotions, they become stagnant and stale and they actually poison you. And because you're not an isolate in, in, in a separate universe, we are part of a whole. So if you are stagnant and if there's poison inside you, you're actually poisoning those around you at the same time. Well, you can't be Poisonous weeds okay. grow not in a fast-flowing river, my yoga teacher used to tell me. That's true. Yeah, very true. Let life flow through you. Let emotions flow through you. Don't hold on to them. You don't need to. You don't need to at all. Mm. You are light. You are love. You're beautiful. And you are free. And Your essence free. is the free. Truth. Yeah. It's time to liberate our awareness from time. And, and you do it in presence. just in this moment. So in this moment I'm feeling this. And in this moment I'm letting it go. And in this moment I have a wave of sadness about that. And in this moment I'm letting that go. Just now. Just now. Not, not can I do it again tomorrow and the next day. And what about next year when the same anniversary. Right now. I'm able to do it right now. Because this is the only moment. Where you can ever let go of anything or experience anything. And just to know that the full moon does bring up emotions. It That's does. what it does. It brings up the emotions. Feel them, but release them at the same time. Let them wash through you. Don't hold on to them. And what holds on to them is the need for identity in the mind. And the mind is only, a, only knows time. Time past, time future. It knows nothing about the joy of the divine, which is presence. So release, let it go. Feel it, as Michelle said, let it wash through you and come back to your center. Our theme this month on Inner Space is balance. It's all about coming back to centeredness, which is balance, mm. which is love, which yes. is peace. That Thank is, you. Thank you for being with us tonight. You. If you've enjoyed what we've had to share, please will you share it by pressing the share button. Thanks, You're going to lead us out with a... Just a short set, one. Short yes. okay. And then we've got an affirmation for you. We've got some mm -hmm. affirmation cards here. Okay. And you're going to choose from... That I pull first. Okay. Yeah, I can yeah. say choose at the one. end. Okay, here we go. All right. Let's just close our eyes. And take a deep breath in. Expanding your belly on the in-breath. And bringing the breath all the way up to your chest. And then on the out breath, let it all go and relax your shoulders and relax your hands. Just allow your body to let go. Take another deep breath in. Breath all the way in, all the way in, all the way in. Hold it for a second. And then release, release, release. And relax. Relax your shoulders, relax your arms and your hands. And now just connect with your breath and allow it to just flow. Just be the observer of the breath as it flows in and out. With no control, no forcing, no holding. Just allow your body to be in the rhythm of your breath. And now in this place of the observer, just connect with what you are feeling, what you've been feeling today. Possibly you can connect with the sensation somewhere in your body. Connect with that sensation, noticing it. Getting a sense of where it is, how it feels. Maybe it has a texture. Maybe it's hard or soft or spiky or spongy slimy
Maybe it has a colour. Maybe there's an emotion associated with this feeling, this sensation. From this gentle place of awareness, just allow yourself to observe it and take a deep breath. And in this moment, just release it, release it. Let it go, blow it out, and open more, surrender more. Whatever might be coming into your awareness at this time, it might be a thought, it might be a feeling. Whatever it is that you would like to release, let go of this full moon. Whatever that is, in this moment, with the next outbreath, release it. Breathing it out. Just in this moment. And allow the peace that is in you, the peace that is you, to be right where it always is, underneath the surface of any ripples any issues or any worries or concerns. Connect with this deep peace that resides at your very core. This beautiful place of balance. Of love, of light, joy, freedom. Now, affirmation that we pulled. Is I accept even the unacceptable as I choose peace now. Beautiful. I accept even the unacceptable as I choose peace now. Let that peace just permeate your whole being. Let that peace permeate your dreams, your sleep, and your week ahead. Now take a gentle breath in. And out. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes or go to sleep, <laughs> wherever you are. That was beautiful. That was lovely. Wasn't that lovely? Thank you, folks. And just one thing, if you, if you would like to heal your life, love what is more than what was. I'll say that again. Love what is more than what was. You will liberate yourself and you will liberate those around you. Blessings, lots of love. We look forward to Beautiful. catching up with you next Sunday. 99.